Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Alfie. My grandparents were farmers who lived in a tiny village. I would visit them as soon as school was out for summer break. They grew vegetables on their farm. We woke with the sun and worked all day in the vegetable garden. At the end of each day, I'd be so tired, but happy and at peace. But something unexpected happened that summer. My grandfather and I were hard at work in the veggie garden one day. He suddenly collapsed, holding his chest. I called 911 in a panic. Alfie, you're such a great kid, my grandfather said. I wish I could have more time with you. Take care of your grandma for me. I'm sure you'll grow up to be a fine young man. He died before the ambulance arrived. At the funeral, my grandma and I cried the whole time, holding each other. My dad didn't offer any comfort to grandma and didn't seem to care about grandpa's passing. He never visited, even though they were his parents. I'd be willing to bet he couldn't even remember the last time he'd seen them. During the funeral, I overheard my parents whispering to each other. Can't we just put her in a retirement home? Mom said, I don't want her living with us. Dad replied, I don't want that either, but we have to take her in for a while. My father put all their savings into my mother's bank account. She must have at least 150 k in there. At least, if we can get our hands on that money, we can open the gas station of our dreams. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. How could anyone be thinking about money at a time like this? Despite endlessly dreaming about money, they were always broke. I wanted to humiliate them, call them out with everyone watching in the church. But I stayed silent. Grandma would have to live in a retirement home if they didn't get the money, and that was the last thing I wanted. The following day, Dad asked Grandma for the money in her bank account. Grandma said no. That is Alfie's college fund. Sell the house and the land. Start your business with the money from the sale. I don't care. Just don't touch Alfie's money, she said firmly. When he heard that, Dad's mood took a turn. Mom, who would buy a property in the middle of nowhere? Even if somebody wanted to, it's only worth a few thousand dollars. Give us the money. We've been planning for this gas station for years. Alfie doesn't need to go to college. He hasn't got the brains for it anyway. Dad put me down all the time. I could ignore that, but I couldn't believe he would force my grandmother to give up the money just to live with us. I didn't even know my grandparents had saved their money for me. Grandma, I said, it's okay to give dad the money in the bank. If I have to choose between you and college, I choose you. I meant every word. My parents got the money and grandma moved right into my room. Even though I had lost one of the two people I loved the most, thankfully, one of them had come to live with me. Grandpa's death broke my heart, but at least I had this. My parents immediately got to work setting up the gas station. I rarely saw them. I started a small garden in front of our house full of tomatoes, carrots, broccoli, and potatoes. Grandma deserved to eat fresh vegetables like she did back on the farm. My parents saw me working in the garden as they left for work one morning. That kid is such a disappointment, Dad scoffed. We're out building the busiest gas station in town and he's still trying to grow potatoes. Why? Because he's a potato head. <laughs> they laughed so hard the neighborhood shook and sped off in their new car. At first it seemed like business was booming. Between the luxury SUV, shopping bags with high-end labels, and a maid, mom and dad's luck looked like it was finally changing. Of course, they kept it all to themselves, even the maid. It seemed weird my parents could make so much money in such a short time running a gas station. But at the time, more time with the business meant they barely spent any time at home. For the most part, grandma and I lived in peace. Unfortunately, something happened that changed everything. One night, the police raided our house. They took my parents away. It came as a shock until we found out why. In our part of the country, oil is a big industry. We have colossal rigs and refineries that extract and process crude oil straight from the ground. Apparently, my parents had found a shady investor while opening the station, an investor with a long criminal rap sheet. Their partner had found a method of tapping into the refinery's main pipeline, allowing them to siphon thousands of gallons of stolen fuel. So you see, they were selling stolen gas at the station. That's why they'd made so much money so fast. After a month or so, my parents were released on bail, but the police seized everything they'd earned from the business. They lost everything, including the money they got from my grandmother. My parents were back to their miserable lives. Not only were they fighting each other all the time, but they took it out on grandma and me. One day, my dad came at grandma in a threatening tone. We have to sell the farm. My dad left everything to you. You're going to sell the land and give us the money or you're going in a home. Of course, son, she said lovingly. Anything to keep my family together. 
I couldn't take it anymore. No, Grandma, I said. Please don't fall for it again. My dad already took your money from the bank. If they'd been doing honest work in the first place, we wouldn't be in this mess. Why should we have to suffer for their actions? Dad suddenly turned his threats on me. Do you even hear yourself, Potato Head? So that's how it's gonna be, huh? Pack your things. Get out of my house! He screamed at me. I couldn't believe my own father was kicking me out. I turned to my mom with a pleading look. She seemed to agree with me. Shame on you, she said in disgust. You've been living rent-free in this house for years. So ungrateful. But Grandma's patience had its limits. Shame on you two, Grandma shouted. You have a wonderful son and you can't even appreciate him. Alfie, let's pack our things and go now. Grandma and I moved into the farmhouse. We woke up at dawn the next day. Grandma said, back to what we love doing the most. We potato heads are going to keep growing the most delicious potatoes, tomatoes, and carrots this country has ever seen. I hugged her. I could feel another happy and peaceful summer coming on. Everything was going great, but since there was a summer drought, we needed more water for irrigation. For that reason, we had to dig a new irrigation well. Grandma called in a favor from a guy by the name of Jay. He seemed nice. He would come the next day to drill the well and let us pay him back after the harvest. Jay and his crew arrived early in the morning and picked the best spot for the well. Then they started drilling. After about five hours, I started getting concerned. How much longer is this going to take, I asked. We have to dig deeper to reach the water, Jay replied. This is going to be an artisan well. That means we won't need a pump. The water will naturally flow up to the surface. We should hit the aquifer any second now. Before he could say another word, Two crew members started yelling. When we turned around, we saw the water that was shooting out of the hole was pitch black. What I thought were shouts of panic were actually screams of excitement. We had struck oil. You heard that right. I said oil. We found oil on our land while looking for water. The thing I remember most from that day was Jay hollering with joy. It's a blowout. You're rich. Filthy rich. To secure the oil rights, you have to let the government know. So we started the paperwork. Inspectors surveyed the land and found a large oil deposit underground. So we signed a contract. The government would handle drilling arrangements and make regular payments to my grandmother in exchange. According to the inspectors, the well could last 90 years of production. Grandma would make millions of dollars off the oil well. We felt like we'd hit the jackpot. Grandma bought a beautiful home by the water. We were going to spend the summer there together. And as two potato heads, we would continue growing potatoes and other vegetables in our backyard. Our veggie garden turned oil field, made it on the news. It was exciting <laughs> at first, but then my parents came calling. How are you, son? We saw you and your grandma on the TV. We want to come celebrate. Where are you now? He asked. I didn't say anything. Honey, we're so proud of you, Mom lied. You look so good on TV. We missed you. We'll be there in no time. Their call came as no surprise. I'd even prepared something special beforehand. Thanks for calling. Let me go get Grandma. I'll call you in a bit, I said. My parents were excited. My dad said, That would be amazing. We missed your Grandma too. We'll be waiting for your call, son, and hung up. I put on my potato head costume. <laughs> Ten minutes later, Grandma and I video called my parents. Their confused looks were priceless. They knew something was up. Are you having a costume party? My mom said, clearly annoyed. You look ridiculous. Nope, I replied. There's no party. This is how I normally dress. Remember, I'm a potato head. Dad said, Alfie, we were kidding. You're our son. We want to come congratulate you. Grandma had had enough. Enough. You didn't listen to me when you kicked him out of the house. How dare you try to patronize him now? She growled. That's when dad's true colors came out. Mom, I'm your son. I'm entitled to the money from the land and that oil well. And I'll get my money, even if you won't give it to me. Grandma said, oh, so now you remember you're my son. You sure didn't act like it then. And you're not acting like it now. That land is in my name. I submitted my will to the lawyer yesterday. I'm going to leave everything I own to the one person in this family who deserves it most. And that is my grandson. Don't ever bother us again. Mom, mommy, please let me explain. Dad's pleading was interrupted as I ended the call. What a fabulous costume, Potato Head, Grandma said. <laughs> what do you say we head over to our favorite restaurant for some fries? But you're coming in costume, deal. She hugged me as hard as she could, and we had the best dinner I had ever eaten. Those potato fries had never tasted so good. <laughs> 
I'm Daphne. I woke up to my phone ringing. I had binge-watched a show on Netflix until the early morning. I was so sleepy. I pulled the comforter over my head and tried to go back to sleep, but my phone had no intention of quieting down. I forced open my eyes halfway and reached over to see who was calling. It was my best friend, Lucy. She wanted to do a video call. I picked up and said, I'm so sleepy. Can we talk later? Lucy couldn't respond because she was sobbing. Panicked, I sat up and yelled, what's wrong? She couldn't stop crying. Daphne, I need to say goodbye to you, was all she could say. Why? I asked. Unfortunately, Lucy's answer was nothing new to me. I told my mom that I wanted to get a tattoo like yours. She was so upset. You're not going to see Daphne again. She's a bad influence for you. You're getting ideas from her, she said. My mother thinks that having no rules at home is not right. As long as you're friends with Daphne, you're going to want to live like her. It's best if you don't see her anymore. (laughs) Call her and say goodbye, she told me. Lucy was the third best friend I had lost this year. I would get close with someone. They would find out how I lived and share it with their family. Soon after, one of their parents would say something like this. Anything goes at Daphne's home, but kids need to have rules. She's a bad influence for you. You should end your friendship with her. I used to be so sad when that happened, but unfortunately, I'm used to it by now. There was nothing I could do. Since I was fully awake, I might as well get some breakfast. When I went to the kitchen, I saw a note on the fridge door. Mom wrote, See you soon, sweet girl. I figured that my parents had gone on a trip. The note said soon, so they hadn't gone abroad, which meant that they would be back in a week. As you can see, there are no rules for the adults or the kids in our house. Everyone's free to do whatever they want. When I sleep over at a friend's house, I don't tell my parents about it. But for example, if I go to my grandma's and decide to stay there for more than a week, I'll let my family know. That way my mom knows I won't be home for a while so she doesn't have to cook for me. Actually, she doesn't have to cook for me at all. We don't have any rules around that either. At our house, there is no set time for meals. We don't sit and eat together. I can eat my dinner in the kitchen or in my room, anywhere I want to. The best part is I'm free to eat whatever I want as well. For example, I was binge watching that show all night, which was why I only had ice cream and chocolate for dinner. My mom doesn't think of snacks like that as junk food. We always have steamed vegetables, chocolate, fruits, and ice cream in our fridge. Everyone can eat whatever they feel like eating. For those of you who are curious about my health, I can tell you that I've had no issues because of what I eat. Our body already knows what it needs. You can't possibly have chocolate for dinner every day of the week. You will definitely crave steamed vegetables at some point, so thanks to your body, you always end up eating healthy anyway. The other thing I like about our house is that there's no set bedtime. Sometimes I want to go to sleep at 9 p.m. Sometimes I forget about time when watching a show and get into bed at dawn. For a while, I was hooked on The Sims. I was spending every waking minute playing that game. Since there are no rules around gaming or watching TV at our house, my mom used to sit and watch me play The Sims until three in the morning. She would even fall asleep in my bed while I kept playing. Since I don't have a bedtime, you might want to ask me, do I not have school? My answer is, no, I don't. When I hit school age, my parents asked me, do you want to go to school? I said I wanted to because I would have so many new (laughs) friends. But after a while, I realized school was definitely not for me. Going to school meant I had to obey countless rules. But I was raised in a household without any. That's why I was shocked at each and every one of them. One day, I felt so sleepy during class. I told the teacher that I wanted to sleep. She said, you can't sleep at school. You need to wait till you get home. This was the most ridiculous rule I ever heard in my life. I didn't go back to school the next day. I told my parents about my decision to quit school a week later. You might be young, but you still know best what's good for you or not. Do as you wish, (laughs) my dad said. If I'm ever curious about anything, my parents get me a tutor on that subject. I learn things by taking online classes. At school, students are assigned classes without being asked the question, do you want to know more on this subject? I, on the other hand, only learn about the things that I want to know because these are things that I actually care about. 
I never forget what I've learned. When my friends stay over, they are so surprised that we don't have any rules at our house. And I'm surprised that they're surprised. I think it's weird to live by rules. Last year, I had a slumber party with two friends I'd met online. I had a nose piercing at that time. When they saw it, one of them asked, isn't it illegal for people under 18 to get piercings? Why should it be illegal? I answered. When my friend said, that's what my mom told me. You need to be over 18 years old if you want to get a tattoo or a piercing. Otherwise, both the artist and the kid get punished. I figured out what was going on. Her mom had scared her with a lie to keep her from getting either one. She believed it because she always lived by the rules and never questioned them. Then I'll show you something that's going to surprise you even more, I said, pointing to my wrist. I got my first tattoo when I was 13. Now I want a bigger one on my neck, but I keep postponing getting one because I can't decide what to get. I went to look at designs at the tattoo parlor with my mom, but I didn't like the ones she recommended. Next week, I'm going to check it out once more with my dad. My other friend screamed. What? You went to the tattoo parlor with your mom? I can't even imagine my mom being in one, let alone her taking me there. My friends are always surprised when I tell them about my life. What surprises me is that parents feel entitled to set rules for their kids and to punish them. Once I went to a birthday party, there was an ice cream man that gave you as much ice cream as you wanted. I ate very little because there's always ice cream at our house, but the other kids at the party went crazy. Each had at least 10 scoops of ice cream. I found out later that most of them got sick and had sore throats. That's why their families banned them from eating ice cream for a long time. I think that made no sense. The kids saw firsthand that they get sore throats when they have too much ice cream. I'm sure if they see an ice cream man at another party, they will never eat that much again. The kids already learned their lessons, so what's the point of punishing them even further? You may think my parents are eccentric since we have zero rules at home, but that's not what they're like at all. As kids, they were both raised in fairly free households. They told each other about it when they met. When they decided to marry, they thought, we grew up in an environment of freedom, had happy childhoods, and became normal, decent human mm -hmm. beings. Someone who is even more free will have an even happier childhood and grow up to be a wonderful person. And they decided to have no rules for their future kid. I was born seven years after this decision and grew up in a rule-free <laughs> home, just like they imagined. When I was younger, I thought all kids were raised like me. But with time, I realized this wasn't the case at all. I couldn't believe that there were even more rules for kids than there were for adults. I love Pixar movies. When I was nine <laughs> years old, I saw the trailer for Inside Out on YouTube and loved it. Let's go to the movies, I said to our neighbor's daughter. I'll ask my mom, but she said she was very busy today. I don't think she can take me to the movies, she replied. I was surprised when I said, why is your mom taking you to the movies? We'll go, you and I. She was surprised. What do you mean? So you can go to the movies without your parents? She asked. Yes, why? I said. How does your mom respond when you tell her you're going to the movies by yourself? She asked. When I said to her, why would I tell her I'm going to the movies? I'm the one who's going. She <laughs> laughed and thought I was kidding. She was shocked to realize I was dead serious. Later, she told her mom about our conversation. The next day when I asked her, do you want to go and play at the park? She said, my mom won't let me play with you anymore. As you can see, her mom also saw me as dangerous for her kid. I think it's wonderful to live in a house with no rules. In the future, I will definitely raise my own kids the same way. Some of you may argue that kids need rules in their lives. Once a friend told me, I would have been a spoiled brat if my family had no rules at all. If you don't go by the rules, then you are prone to danger. That's why rules are good. I wish you had some rules too then you'd have a much easier and safer life. I think just the opposite. Kids shouldn't be patronized by their families. They should be able to make their own mistakes and learn about life that way. These are obviously my opinions. You may think differently. Please write your thoughts in the comments. I'm Julia. My sister Alexa and I were blindfolded, riding in the back seat of a car. We didn't know where we were going. Alexa said, Dad told me not to open our eyes or we'll ruin the surprise. I'm so excited. Where do you think we're going? He either got a new yacht or a mansion. Or maybe he got an island again like last time. I really don't care. I'm only here because I don't want to be a party pooper, I replied. 
Shortly after, the car came to a stop. We got off, still <laughs> blindfolded. Then we heard Dad's voice. You can open your eyes, girls. Let's see if you'll like this. Dad, I can't believe it. It's incredible. <laughs> Alexa screamed. I reluctantly took off my blindfold. We were at the airport, and a dazzling plane made of solid gold stood before me. Pointing to the plane, Dad said, I bought this from the sultan of some country called Brunei. It's not just the surface of the plane. Everything inside is also made of gold. Oh, man, I love how gold shimmers. We need more golden furniture at home. <laughs> I'd stopped commenting on Dad's love for glamour a long time ago, but a solid gold plane was so outrageous that I couldn't stop myself. Dad, when the plane is up in the air, no one can tell it's golden because it's so far away. And when it lands, only the crew will see it at the airport. I really don't understand why someone would buy a golden airplane, I said. He was used to me criticizing him. If I share our plane on my Facebook page, everyone will see it. Your sister will post photos of it on Instagram. I wish you would also post to social media. Anyway, come on. I'll give you a tour inside the plane. We can even fly our golden plane to New York for a coffee. What do you say? He asked. My sister screamed, excellent idea, and started running towards the plane. And I, irritated as always, followed her. As you can probably tell, my dad is one of the wealthiest people on the planet. When we lost my mom, I was eight and Alexa was five. My dad wanted to remarry, but we didn't want him to. Thankfully, he listened to us. Back then, my dad wasn't rich. He was working as an engineer for a mobile phone company. With the experience that he had there, he invented a fast mobile phone charger and patented it. Today, all mobile phones use his invention. In exchange for using this technology, phone manufacturers pay millions of dollars to my dad every month. Going from someone who could barely pay his bills to having unlimited money changed my dad a lot. We had no idea he was such a show-off. He will do anything he can to brag about his money. What's worse <laughs> is my sister is just like him. Ever since he bought that golden plane, dad became obsessed with gold. He had most of the mansion we lived in covered in gold. We had toilets and faucets made of solid gold. The couch we sat on, the beds we slept in were all golden. We ate our meals with gold silverware on a solid gold table. One evening, Dad took this gold situation to a whole new level. We were in the dining room. Normally, there's a daily menu on the table listing the dishes our cooks have made for us that day. Among the hundred or so dishes, we pick the ones we want to eat. But there was no menu that night. Dad said, girls, I got a surprise for you, and clapped his hands. A chef walked into the room. Nikolai is our new chef. He used to be the private chef for a Russian billionaire. His specialty is, actually, I'd rather not say. You should see this for yourselves. Next, the staff started serving the plates. Each dish was shimmering because they were all covered in gold. Gold-coated steaks, hamburgers, buffalo wings. Alexa was looking around dreamily. So our new chef makes golden dishes, huh, Dad? That's the coolest thing I've heard in my life, she exclaimed. Dad said proudly, Nikolai uses 24 karat gold leaf in these dishes. It's not dangerous because it's edible gold. We were supposed to eat golden food now? This was ridiculous. Dad, are you okay? It's not fair for us to eat food that's made of gold when there's so much poverty in the world. I feel so bad seeing so many people without homes. You, on the other hand, are ordering food to be made with gold? I can't possibly stand for this, I said and ran out of the dining room. Since then, I've never had dinner with them. According to Alexa, Chef Nikolai was still cooking food with gold. Both my dad and my sister were so happy with it. I hadn't seen my dad in a while. A few days before my birthday, he came to my room. I know you're mad at me, but I'll make it up to you. You told Alexa that you didn't want a birthday party. I'll honor your wish, but please allow me to at least give you a birthday <gasps> present, he said. I probably wouldn't like what he had gotten me, but I still said yes. With a strained smile, I replied, okay, <laughs> but please, nothing big. Dad was really happy, and he said, I'm sure you will love it. You'll even forgive me when you see it. Honestly, I was intrigued. What was he going to give me? I had to wait until my birthday to find out. 
Finally, the day arrived. Just like all of Dad's surprises, it began with me in a blindfold. Alexa guided me by my arm. We started walking. She was saying we weren't supposed to leave the mansion. Soon after, I realized we were outdoors. Alexa removed my blindfold. We were on the big balcony in the front of the house. When I looked out to the garden, I couldn't believe my eyes. There were hundreds of people down there. It looked like all of them were homeless people brought from downtown. My dad was also on the balcony with us and there was a big treasure chest right next to him. The chest was chock full of gold coins. Dad picked up a gold coin from the chest and threw it down to the people. And all hell broke loose. The people were fighting each other ruthlessly to catch that gold coin. After the scuffle, <laughs> one guy finally grabbed it. Then all the men started staring back at the balcony, waiting for another one to be thrown at them. It was a really sad sight. My dad said, Happy birthday, honey. This was the birthday gift I was telling you about. You told me you felt sorry for the homeless. There are exactly a thousand gold coins in this chest. You can throw them all. Wasn't it so fun to see them fight for that one gold coin? <laughs> and laughed. I was listening to him in complete shock. Dad, have you lost your mind? What kind of gift is this? When did you become so heartless? I said. He got upset. Julia, you don't like anything anymore. I think it's a great idea. Look, we gathered all these homeless people and brought them here. Do you think that was easy? And most of them will leave here with gold in their pockets. What else do you want? Dad, you don't know me at all. It's utterly cruel to throw gold coins from a balcony onto people and watch them fight each other for them. My father can't be this heartless. That's enough. I am disowning you. You're not my father anymore. I screamed. Both he and my sister were shocked by my words. I didn't want to spend one more second in that house. I returned to my room. I called my mom's sister and told her everything. Come here, you can live with us, she said. I packed a few clothes and left. As I was leaving through the garden, I saw that they were still throwing <laughs> coins at people. They were laughing as they watched people fight each other. I felt a deep sense of relief to be leaving this place. Two weeks passed and I was so happy at my aunt's. I spoke to Alexa on the phone sometimes, but I had to cut off my dad entirely. I had one small issue. I had left my math project at the mansion. It took me so long to do it that I couldn't start over from scratch. I texted my sister that night. I told her that I was going to come early in the morning and wait for her in front of the mansion so she could bring me my project. I went to the house in the morning, but Alexa was nowhere to be seen. I called her. She didn't pick up. I figured she was asleep. It looked like I had to enter the house and get it myself. The security guards were surprised to see me at that hour of the day, but they didn't dare say anything. I greeted them and went inside. I wanted to see my sister before I got the project. Once I was home, I realized that I'd missed her. As soon as I walked into Alexa's room, I started screaming. She was lying on the floor, unconscious and foaming at the mouth. I went to my dad's bedroom to let him know. He was in his bed, but he was also unconscious and foaming at the mouth. I called 911 immediately. The paramedics arrived shortly after. They took my sister and my dad to the hospital. In the hospital, I discovered that both of them had their stomachs pumped. Apparently, they had gold poisoning. Chef Nikolai was trying to make it to the Guinness Book of World Records with the most expensive dessert ever made. To increase its value, he put five times the normal amount of gold he puts in his dishes. When my dad and Alexa ingested that much gold, their bodies couldn't handle it. After they got treatment, I was able to see both of them. The doctor said to my dad, you owe your life to your daughter. If you had come in an hour later, we couldn't have saved you. <gasps> After a while, they came to visit me at my aunt's house. My dad apologized to me a million times. I don't know how to make you forgive me. You are so right to denounce me as a father. I'm going to do my best to earn the right to be your father again, he said. The next day, he had all the golden objects removed from the house. He had our old furniture brought in and he obviously fired Chef Nikolai. Yesterday, he sent me a video where he sold the golden plane. He said with the money he got from the sale, he was going to build a modern shelter for people living without a home. It made me so happy to find out about all this. I think I may forgive him, but he has let me down so many times before. That's why I need to wait a bit longer to make sure that he's changed. <laughs>